Hi to everybody, I'm Pasquale Laise. Uh, I am a um, visiting postdoc uh, in the laboratory of Jason Ernst here at UCLA, and I'm a postdoc at the European Institute of Oncology in Milan. Um, okay, since in this talk we have to talk about what, uh, what we do, my, this is my what, uh, what I'm interested in. I'm interested in epigenomics and gene regulation. I'm interested in cancer, in neural differentiation, and cell reprogramming. My background is in molecular biology and system biology. Today, uh, I will talk to you about uh, brain cancer. The title of, of, uh, of the presentation is Deciphering the Polycom Dependent Regulatory Networks in Gliomagenesis. In the story that I'm going to tell, uh, to tell you, there are two main actors. One is gliomas, and the other is polycom. What are gliomas? Gliomas are the most common brain tumors in human. There are different grades of gliomas, and the most, aggressive is the most aggressive, the highest grade of gliomas is called glioblastoma multiforme. Um, this is very aggressive because the, the median survival of patients with glioblastoma is uh, one year, despite the multimodal treatment uh, of, for this patient that includes surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. The other actor is polycom. The polycom group of protein is a family of protein that is involved in many biological processes, including, soma, uh, including cell differentiation, as how we demonstrated in 2013 in Fragon et al, uh, is involved also in cell reprogramming. There is, I mean, it seems that uh, this regulation of this protein is associated to cancer, to cancer development and differentiation. But despite there is this association between polycom and cancer, the networks that are affected by polycom during the tumorogenesis, during the development of cancer, are still not understood. And this is what we want to do in this work. We want to understand the role of this group of protein, called polycom, in the brain tumors. In particular, during the development of, of, the, of the brain tumors. The other two words about polycom, um, wait. Other two words about polycom. Um, this family of protein called, pro called, uh, called polycom can be divided into two main complex. One is called the PRC1, and the other, the other uh, complex is called PRC2. We'll talk about the PRC2 complex, because uh, inside the PRC2 complex there are, uh, belong to, uh, there are enzymes that belong, belong to the PRC2 complex, like EZTC1 and EZTC2. These enzymes, EZTC1 and EZTC2, are important because these enzymes are responsible for the trimethylation of the lysine 27 on the histon 3. The H3 K27 trimethylation is an epigenetic modification. It's an histon modification that is associated to gene silencing. Okay, that's, this is what we want to, I mean, we want to study the role of this polygon protein in the brain tumor, the development of the brain tumors. Okay, in order to study the gliomagenesis, that is the development, the development of the brain tumors, we used a well-established mouse model. This mouse model relies on the loss of the inge 4 r globus and the constitutive activation of a mutated form of the EGF receptor, EGFR. These are the two lesions that uh, uh, are the most common lesion in the human glioblastoma multiforme. And what we do with this mouse? Basically, we start uh, with uh, a mouse that is deficient for this, uh, uh, for this inge 4 r globus. From this mouse, we derive the astrocytes. The astrocytes were infected with uh, a retrovirus that is expressing a mutated form of the EGFR, and we inject the astrocyte in a recipient mouse. From this recipient mouse, after a, a month, we can derive the primary tumors, and we can put the cell in culture and study the tumors. But the primary tumors were also put in a second, were also injected in a second recipient mouse because in order to test the tumorogenicity of these tumors. What we are going to study is the transition between the uh, astro-GFR, the astrocytes, and, uh, and, the, and the tumors. Okay, what, this is the slide, this I think is the most important slide of the talk. If you have to remember something about this talk, this is the, this is the slides that you have to remember. That is the analytical workflow. Um, what we do in this slide, basically, we try to, what we want to do is to integrate experimental data and bioinformatic analysis in order to understand the molecular mechanism underlying the uh, brain cancer. In particular, the molecular mechanism driven by polycom. Okay, starting from the experimental system, that is our mouse model, from this mouse model, we have the astrocyte, we have also the tumors. We perform the what? We perform the epigenomic analysis and the transcriptomic analysis. For the epigenomic analysis, we perform the chip seek for the H3K27, H3K27 trimethylation. And we have identified those that are the polygon target. 
using the transcriptomic analysis, for the transcriptomic analysis we, uh, we performed the RNA-seq and we wanted to identify the genes that are differential expressed between the astral GFR and the primary tumor. So when, once we have both this set of genes, we can compare this set of genes and we can identify the genes that, are, that acquire the histone mark during the transition from tumorogenic astrocyte to primary tumors and are also downregulated. These genes are the direct polygon targets. But uh, in the next step of this workflow, what we did basically, uh, we want to also to predict the transcription regulators that are controlled by polygon. Because, I mean, polygon is an histone mark. There is a redistribution of this histone mark during the, uh, during the glymogenesis. And the, among the polygon targets, there are genes that are uh, more important than the other. More important are the because the, among these genes there are, for example, important regulators like genes that encode for transcription factors. Transcription factors are proteins that control also the expression of other genes. And what we understand using this analysis is we want to predict which are the transcription factors that are, um, that are upstream to the genes that are differential expressed and are controlled by polygon. To this end, we perform the transcription factor modifiement analysis. We have identified a list of represented transcription factors. And when I say overrepresented transcription factors, I mean that are overrepresented on the basis of their consensus binding sites in the genes that are differential expressed. So when we have this information, we can also integrate the epigenomic analysis, the results of, of the tra transcriptomic analysis. With the transcription factor modification analysis, we have a list of transcription factors that are downregulated, that are polygon target, and are also overrepresented from the transcription factor uh, of representation analysis. When I say that are um, the novo h 3 kento that acquire the h 3 kento methylation or polygon target is basically the same thing. Um, the next step is basically the, the validation, the experimental validation of these of this, uh, uh, this genes. And uh, experimental validation means that we uh, confirm that the differential expression of these genes using the real-time QPCR, and we confirm also the acquisition of the eastern mark using the cheap QPCR. OK, now we are at the moment that we have, I mean, profiled, uh, we have studied our experimental system. We have identified which are the polygon target. We have also predict which the candidate transcription regulator that are controlled by polygon in gramogenesis. We have the experimental validation of these of these genes. The next step is basically consisting to what we want to do. The next step is to perturb the candidate the candidate regulators. I mean, if these are regulators that are important, they will have some effect in our system. And then we perturb the candidate regulators and we measure the outputs. How do we measure the output? We measure the output. Uh, we measure the effect that this perturbation has on the survival and uh, also on the transcriptome. We measure the, uh, the transcriptome before and after the perturbation. And doing, doing th that, we can basically identify the genes that are, uh, became differential expressed and that change expression because, uh, because of the perturbation of this regulator. This, then these genes are controlled by the regulators. And then we have the network model. The network model is important because it uh, gives us um, a mechanistic understanding of uh, our results. Uh, OK, so now I, mean, now I will talk about the results that we have uh, applying this analytical workflow. Um, I will not go into details of all the results, because otherwise uh, I will not stay in the 15 minutes. But, uh, OK, uh, using this workflow, we have identified the genes that are differential expressed uh, between the uh, astro GFR and the primary tumors and the polygon target. We have something like more than 500 genes that are differential expressed and uh, something like 450 genes that are polygon target. I mean, we performed also the canonical pathway analysis for this pathway. That means that we want to understand in which biological process are involved in these this genes, both the genes that are differential expressed and the genes that are polygon target. And we found that these genes are involved in important pathway, important because are a relevant pathway for the gliomagenesis, for the tumors. Like uh, the axon guidance signaling pathway, the human embryonic cell sample hypotensis, the, um, the, re the regulation of, it, uh, of the epithelium and sanguinal transition, all these pathways are, are very important for uh, tumorogenesis. And uh, if you remember the last slides of, uh, of the workflow, after the identification of the genes that are differential express and the polygon target, we can compare this set of genes and we can identify the candidate direct polygon target. I mean, overlapping the genes that are differential express, the genes that are polygon target, we found an overlap of 30 genes. These 30 genes 
uh, we also perform the canonical pathway analysis for these 30 genes. These 30 genes are, are important because they acquired the histone mark and became dark regulated. Among these genes, we found uh, um, these genes that are, uh, er, that are associated with uh, canonical pathways that are extremely important for the glamogenesis. Extremely important because we found inside the axon guided signaling pathway, we found genes like SLIT2. SLIT2 is a tumor suppressor gene. It's a tumor suppressor gene specifically in gliomas. And we found also that there is many members of this pathway that, that is called the BMP signaling pathway that is controlling the differentiation of many type of cells. And this controls the astroglia differentiation. And we are talking about astrocytes. Many members of this signaling pathway are downregulated, like BMP4. And this suggests what? That the, the polycom, the role of polycom, basically, what is, is to uh, silence the genes, like the tumor suppressor genes, and also these silencing genes that are, uh, are important for differentiation of, uh, of, uh, of the astrocyte. Then blocking the silencing the tumor suppression and also uh, silencing the genes that are important for differentiation promotes the tumorogenesis. Uh, all the results in this case we were confirmed by uh, real-time QPCR and chip QPCR. The next step was the identification of the transcription factors that are upstream the genes that are differential expressed. Uh, to, this, uh, to, do, to perform this analysis, we have, uh, we perform this analysis, we have identified something like 20 uh, genes encoding from transcription factors that are overrepresented uh, in the differential expressed genes. We ranked this list of genes on the basis of their differential expression, and we correlate these genes with the H3K27 trimethylation status. So doing this comparison, we found that there is one regulator, just, just one regulator that is going to be downregulated and then acquire the the eastern mark in the tumors. This guy is, is called ZFP423, is this transcription factor. And we confirmed also in this case the uh, differential expression of ZFP and the acquisition of the eastern mark using the real time QPCR and chip QPCR. So now we have, the, we have defined which are the polygon target. Uh, we, are, we have also predicted which are the transcription regulators that are downstream polygon and are upstream to the genes that are differential expressed. So now, I mean, this is what we observed in our system. Now, what we want to do, we want to generalize our, our finding also in other system. To do this, basically, we, we interrogated another mouse model that is, uh, um, I mean, I will not go into the details of this mouse model, but it's, on, it's another mouse model that is driven by PDGF Peta. And uh, also in this case, in, the, in this other mouse model of glioma, we found that there is a clear downregulation of ZFP from the neural progenitors to the primary tumors. And very interesting, what we found is that ZFP423, or better, the um, human orthologous of ZFP423, that is ZNF423, is downregulated in the human glioblastoma multiform. This transcription factor was found, I mean, in, in literature, well, it's been, it's been, uh, we found that this transcription factor uh, has been associated to another type of tumor that is called the neuroblastoma. And in particular, is a marker of the neuroblastoma outcome. In this elegant work from uh, René Bernard's and co-workers, they have identified that, uh, they identified that there is a correlation between the expression level of ZNF423 and the survival of the patient. And patients with a high level of ZNF423, they, they have a better survival. So we have decided that also in the case of the gliomas can be a correlation between the expression of ZFP and the survival of the patients. Um, to, uh, to test this hypothesis, we have, uh, I have analyzed 300, uh, 343 <coughs> patients uh, with gliomas. And uh, I correlated the expression uh, of ZFP with the, the survival, and we found that there is a, a statistical significant correlation between the survival and, uh, and uh, the expression of ZFP. In particular, okay. Uh, in particular, um, uh, what, uh, uh, okay, in particular, those patients, also in this case, the patients that have high level of ZFP have a better prognosis. Okay. Uh, Okay, this is the last part of, uh, of, the, of the workflow that is basically the perturbation. The perturbation means that we are basically, we say that this transcription factor is going to be downregulated during the glomagenesis. In order to perturb the system, we have to upregulate these genes. We force the upregulation of this gene, and, uh, and we found that uh, there is a, a, a subset of, uh, uh, a subset of, tumor, of tumorogenic astrocyte, a, a batch of tumorogenic astrocyte that is 
uh, that respond to the ZFP overexpression. Because in this case, we found that uh, there is a significant improvement of the survival when you uh, overexpress the ZFP423. We also have characterized in our paper the differences, the molecular difference between uh, the ZFP responsive for the ZFP do, can, from the batch that do not respond to ZFP. But I, cannot, I don't have time to go in the details. We can talk about it later if you want. And uh, okay, last thing is basically the reconstruction of the ZFP network. Okay, the last step was the identification in order to give a mechanistic, in order to have a mechanistic understanding of our results, we have reconstructed the ZFP gene network. And in order to do that, we basically we start with uh, the measurement of, uh, of the transcriptome. I mean, we performed the RNA-seq on the astro-EGF bar before and after the upregulation of ZFP. We have identified the genes that are differential expressed. In the second step, uh, I performed a correlation analysis of uh, more than 100, uh, 160, micro, more than 100 microarray gene expression data across multiple conditions in, uh, in, uh, in mouse. And integrating these two sets to these two results, we have uh, reconstructed the, the, the ZFP423 network. So uh, the conclusion is basically is that uh, oh, we have identified the, um, a novel set of polycon-dependent regulatory network that promote gliomagenesis. We have defined the transcriptomic change in the polygon target in gliomagenesis, identified the circuits that are directly controlled by polygon and those that are indirectly controlled by polygon through ZFP423. Finish it. <laughs> and I want to thank, I want to thank uh, the, um, the Jason Ernst for giving me the possibility to come here and visit his lab for six months, all the members of uh, the Ernst lab and uh, the test lab in Milano. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>